Uh, yeah, so our next speaker is Jason Morgan from Buoyant, and he's going to be telling us about using Linkerd and Flagger together. Jason, whose hair changes a lot every time I see you, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, have, you have many looks. <laughs> yeah, I gotta gotta do something. I'm staying home all the time, so it's the only thing I get to work on. <laughs> have you learned how to give yourself a haircut? That's the COVID thing, right? Uh, yeah, although it's turned into a lot of mullet. Oh, oh, I did not see the bag. Oh, I'm, glad I I'm so glad uh, you showed us that. We welcome. would have never known. I don't. I don't share that all the time. But get That's out amazing! Of wow. Sweet. All right, that'll be the next uh, Linkerd T-shirt, uh, which I have, by the way, <laughs> from uh, Los Angeles. Uh, cool. So go ahead, go ahead and start. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, let's start by sharing screens. Yes. I'll just see if uh, I can give you a share screen thumbs up. Yes. OK, uh, can everybody see this? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a whiteboard looking thing with a. Yes. Great. Uh, awesome. So I want to kind of talk about what it is that we're going to talk about today. So first off, hello, everyone. I'm Jason. I talk about Linkerd for Buoyant, the company that makes Linkerd. I think it's great. I'd love to tell you why it's great and feel free to uh, hop over to buoyant.io uh, if you have any Linkerd questions or you want to hear about Buoyant. Uh, so with that, let's go into a quick demo. So I'm going to show you today how to use Linkerd with the Nginx Ingress and Flagger to add some capabilities or, or do a type of progressive delivery that isn't available in the SMI um, functionality with, with Flagger and Linkerd, but that we can do anyway, because with Flagger, you can do like uh, canary types or rollout types with, um, with your ingress. So here's what my environment looks like at a high level. I've got the Linkerd control plane. I have a Kubernetes cluster. I have an Nginx ingress, and I've got a pod info application. So Nginx is talking to pod info, and it's sending some traffic over. Now we're going to add in we're going to add in Flagger into the environment, which is going to change some things. So let's look at that new version. Uh, of what we're going to see once we get once we get Flagger in there. So first off, I add Flagger and connect it to my control plane, and it gets permissions to do a bunch of stuff in the environment. It also is able to talk to Nginx and create ingress resources. Uh, so what I'm going to get here is Nginx instead of talking directly. Well. Nginx is still actually going to talk directly from Nginx to the pod. So the basic flow doesn't change, but there's some new decision points. So this, this canary object is going to come in, and it's going to instruct Nginx that when it sees certain criteria, it's going to use an ingress and to change a new ingress to change where traffic gets routed to. So instead of going from Nginx to pod info, it's going to, under certain criteria, go from Nginx to pod info canary. That's the Kubernetes service to the pod info canary pod. I hope that makes sense. Uh, if it doesn't, feel free to make a message in, in the Slack or put something in the chat here if we can do if we can do chat in this. And I'd love to address it as it comes up. Um, so yeah, let's kick off by doing a little a little demo. So here I've got the pod info application that a lot of you are probably familiar with. You can see uh, someone can give me a thumbs up that the text looks big enough. You should be able to see on the left hand side, I've got a watch running at the bottom right or bottom left, uh, which shows you what's going on in the pod info namespace. So I've got a traffic generator and I've got two pod info pods. On top left, I've just got a blank thing. And here on the, on the right, I've got the pod info application. We can go into Linkerd. We can take a look at our different namespaces. Uh, if you're curious, go to dashboard.sevo.59s.io, and you can actually follow along with what we're going to do live. We can see here, Linkerd sees that there's another, you know, there's a pod info primary deployment and an empty pod info deployment. This is, this is uh, what we've created with, with Flagger once we created this canary object. We get two new, or one new deployment. One for the old, or one for the new version of pod info, one for the existing running version, right? And to go back from our diagram, what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, we're going to put an update to the pod info deployment. It's going to effectively update pod info canary, and we're going to get some new pods and traffic for our test users. It's going to run from nginx 
through to Plot Info Canary. We're going to use Nginx's capability to do header-based routing at the ingress to actually get this kicked off. And so with no more, uh, no more hype, let's do it. So micro patch, so I've got a patch file. This is the changes that I'm going to make to pot info, right? And we're going to change it from, you know, the basic cuttlefish logo to, you know, we've decided that we really want the Linkerd logo on our pot info site. Uh, and actually you can see this yourself too. If you go to pot info info.cvo.59s.io, you'll see, uh, you'll see this app changing as we go through the process. So I'm going to save my changes. I'm going to get out. I've got a new, got a new addition I've got to make. So I'll do a git commit. So I've changed the logo. So we're going to go ahead and add that to git. We're going to do a push. Uh, because we're using, we're using flux with flagger, because why not? We're going to make a push and then we're going to let Flux reconcile our environment. Give me just a second while I get my key. We're going to make our push. Uh, then we can wait for Flux to reconcile on its own or if you're impatient, you can force Flux to reconcile with the Flux reconcile command. I'm going to do with source so it updates the source. What we're going to see is Flaggers watching the deployment. It sees there's an incoming change, and so it's going to spin up two new pods, right? And those new pods are going to are going to receive some of the traffic, some of this test traffic. And we'll show you how that works as soon as the reconciliation is done. We've got a couple little pauses in here, so if it's possible to do questions live, I'd love to love to hear from anyone that has any anything that they'd like more elaboration on. So for now, right, only the pod info service has end valid endpoints. The pod info canary currently doesn't have any, right? Um, you can look at Linkerd. You can see that there's, there's no pods yet, but that's coming, I promise. All right, good timing. So now two new pods are getting spun up. Uh, so these are, these are the new versions of the, of the app, right? And these, these new versions uh, are going to have are going to have um, that new image at its core, right? So instead of the main logo, they're going to have a separate Linkerd logo. But if I go look at my app, right, what I wanted to do here was show how we could do header-based routing, right? So I, I'm saying, hey, listen, if you've got if you've got a certain if you've got a certain header, we'll let you see the new version of the app. But standard users aren't going to aren't going to interface with it, right? So I've got pod info. It looks like like while my canary looks like it's going. Right? I can't actually see anything here. But if I go and change my header to say X canary always, any second now, my image will change from um, you know, a little cuttlefish to Linkerd. And if I turn it off, because I'm no longer simulating I'm a tester, it goes back to the cuttlefish. Right? And now all I have to do is wait for wait for the validation I set up in my canary to pass. And then we'll we'll get the next version of our application. So here, oh sorry, here, the flow from Nginx to either Pod Info Canary or Pod Info Proxy is being determined by certain header or cookie values, right? That's what that's what makes the decision about where you're going. I could also again set Nginx to do it based on weight from one service to the other, um, or I could set the service mesh itself to do it based on based on weights. Right, the metrics that are powering the decision making that that Flagger is doing are coming from Linkerd. So while Nginx is setting where the traffic is going and it's handling the routing, Linkerd itself is pro providing the metrics that power the decisions about whether to go forward. And we're going to take a look at the canary object. We're going to take a look at the ing ingress object as we go. Let's put this back because we're about to see this change as the as the change successfully completes. So let's look at our ingress. There we go. So here is the ingress. So when I when I created my canary, I told it, hey, you're gonna work with you're gonna work with the Nginx ingress, and you're specifically gonna mirror this pod info ingress object that I've created. Um, so let's look at what it creates. So this is what Flagger created as an ingress. Uh, so it created an ingress and it put in a bunch of annotations. One, it 
mirrored my Let's Encrypt stuff, which is good. So I've got a valid HTTPS certificate. Uh, it also gave me some cool features around, um, gave me some cool features around the Canary. So Canary true, Canary weight zero, set service upstream. Oh, it also has the header somewhere, but I don't see it on this one. Can I grab the other one? Well, I may have I may have missed my time frame on it, but it also sets in here the rules for specifically what uh, when under what circumstances I should route it. And there's two rules, and I don't know why I'm not seeing them. Um, I may have again I may have missed that missed my time window, uh, but that's that's what gives our that's what gives us the the routing from one service to the other. All right, and let's go take a look at the canary. So what we had to set up to actually make this thing work. Oh wait, one more one more bit that's worth worth doing. When you're integrating Nginx in particular with Linkerd, it's got a really cool feature called set service upstream, right? So Nginx by default is going to try and route to individual pods in a service. Uh, with this value here, we can tell Nginx uh, to instead default to routing on a particular ingress to default to routing to the Kubernetes service instead. And that allows Nginx to play seamlessly well with, uh, with Linkerd in your environment. So you won't have to do any configuration to, it, to Nginx or Linkerd to tell them to work together. You just add the proxy and everything behaves as normal. And this here is, will determine who makes routing decisions for your app, either the, um, the service mesh or the ingress. So let's look at our canary. So let's do yet and the next canary so we'll see what is this what does this canary actually look like um so the the big thing you'll do so if you've done this or if you saw my talk last year where i showed you how to do it via smi right this section here is new this is the ingress reference so i tell it what my provider is so this could be nginx it could be a number of other ingresses it could also be gateway api which is a kind of a neat one um we're looking to talk more about in the future uh, you give it the the API class of thing that you're working with, and then the particular the particular one to to worry about. Uh, then when you get down here to the analysis, you're going to add this. When you're doing A/B testing, you're going to add the number of iterations, and then you're going to add the criteria. And this is what appears this is what appears in the nginx annotations uh, when you catch it in a timely fashion, right? So exactly what under what circumstances we'll get uh, you know the new version of our app. At this point, you can see on the right, we finished our deployment. On the left-hand side, there's no more old pod info that's gone through and, and, uh, and finished completely. And the last thing that we do here uh, is because I've, I've got a traffic generator in my environment, but the traffic generator is just sending traffic to the main app. So I needed something that would, uh, I need something that would generate some traffic to this version of the app so that we could get metrics, right? Inside the canary, I always define like what Linkerd metrics I care about uh, to determine whether or not this thing is passed, passed or failed. In our case, I want the success rates to be um, a minimum of 99% successful, and I want the request duration to max out at whatever 200 milliseconds. But to get that traffic, I had to use I had to use that um, that uh, load tester that comes with Flagger that you can use to to send traffic. And on it, we just set our headers. Uh, one header, one cookie, so we could send some traffic over to um, over to PodInfo. And yeah, that's the this is the the demo, right? Like it's it's not crazy exciting, but what you get is a lot of power for very little work, right? I've installed Linkerd in the environment. If you're looking for an example of doing Linkerd in a full flux setup, here I've got this uh, I've got this repo, Jason Morgan Linkerd demos. Happy to send it in a link or put it make it available in the chat. It walks through how do you set up a fully highly available Linkerd in your environment, install Flagger, install Nginx, and do this exact demo yourself. And of course, if you're curious, go to linkerd.io, check out the Linkerd service mesh, and install it in your cluster and see if, see if you like it. And I think that's, uh, that's all I've got. Do I have any questions? Awesome. Um, there's a little bit of delay, so we'll check. Um, yeah, thanks for the great demo. Um, let me just do a time check. And if we have a good amount of time, I do have one more so I can show you how to do it the other way as well. Where yeah, you do... that'd be great because we're actually yeah. 10 minutes early or seven minutes early. Yeah. All right. So 
what I did here is I just opened up I just opened up the little editor that I have. So we're going to modify this canary. So let's do some commenting. So here, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out. Uh, I'm going to comment out the. Um, I'm going to comment out the um, the settings to make it be header based, right? And I'm instead just going to have it be weight based, right? So for weight based, we're going to uncomment max weight. We're going to uncomment step weight. And now we're going to get like that just percentage of traffic, right? So control S, control Q, and get, and, oh, sorry. All right, so we've, we've pushed that canary. Um, so that's just gonna change the type of canary, but we still have to change our, our app. So let's swap that logo out one more time. So now instead of the Linkerd logo, it's a, it's a GitOps conference. So we're gonna, we're gonna change it over to the Weave icon. All right, so Control Q. There we go. Uh, we're going to change that logo one more time and do a git push. And we're going to see, uh, we're going to see now the same thing happen, but, oh, let me do the reconcile one more time. When we see the reconciliation happen, now I won't have to do anything header based, right? Just some percent of the traffic is going to flow uh, to the new version of the app instead of the old one. And then another great time for questions. Otherwise, I've got a really terrible joke for you. All right, so uh, I, have a, I have a UDP joke for you. You may not get it. Works better when I have something. <laughs> you can hear the audible groans. <laughs> so so uh, what we've got here so the canary is picked up. So we ran the reconcile there. Um, we ran the reconcile. We've got a new version of pod info coming out. And what we're going to see, and we can force it to refresh a little bit if we want, right? We're going to see is periodically this logo is going to shift from the Linkerd logo to the Weave logo. Because now instead of going by header, it's going to go by weight, right? And one thing we, we didn't look at this before, right? But this is the, this is the map of who's talking to what inside the cluster, inside that namespace, right? And generator last time only spoke to pod info primary because at no point did it have the header value set that would tell it to go to the to the next version of the app, right? Um, Sebastian asked for the joke, but I feel like they regretted it after hearing it. Uh, but what we're going to see here is now some percent of the traffic, and we can see it starting to occur already, is going to the new version of pod info that's spinning up. And at some point, this thing will, will update and show you that. And if you're watching the pod info URL, yeah, you're going to periodically see the Weaveworks logo come in and replace it. Again, just based on a percentage of the traffic and whether or not I set a header is gonna to be totally irrelevant, right? Here my header set. That's bad timing, this shouldn't actually keep going. Um, lots of bad luck based on, what, there we go. <laughs> the header set and it doesn't make it, doesn't make any difference to what version of the app that I see. And here, let's see if I can refresh you, get a better view. No, I'm still not seeing it. Anyway, at some point I'll see that the calls also coming from uh, the calls also coming from pod info. And yeah, that's our that's our server. Oh no, sorry, I have the generator point at the wrong service. My bad. We're not actually going to see that in this in this graph. Uh, but again, we've got we've got weight 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 based routing. So if generator were speaking to the ingress instead, we'd see we'd see that flow getting split at the ingress because that's where it gets split. We do SMI based, right? The big change is with SMI based, we're splitting on a service, not at the ingress, so where the split occurs. So with, with Nginx routing, the split's really occurring up here at Nginx, and it's deciding whether to go to the canary service or the primary service. When you do SMI based routing, you get a third service in the mix, and then everything calls to that common service URL, right? It'd just be pod info dot 
whatever namespace dot canary, uh, and and then based on a percentage chance, it would either go to the primary or the canary service in that environment. With nginx, it's even a little simpler. You just tell nginx to split it, and it makes that decision itself. Ivan has a question. So Flagger right now does not work with stateful sets, but there is scenarios where stateful sets can be deployed progressively. Uh, what are your thoughts about how we can do it with service mesh or flagger? Oof, that's a good question. I guess, sorry, Ivan, I'm gonna totally weasel out of this and and punt. I'd love to I'd love to understand a bit more about the scenario that you're talking about. Cause like I guess it depends what you're doing, right? Like I wouldn't want to do, or at least I can't think of wanting to do like progressive delivery with like database changes or something like that, right? So I'd it'd be be useful to know a lot more before I can provide you any kind of useful answer. You can do all sorts of, like, there's all sorts of stuff that you can do, right? So with Staples, I remember when I used to do Kafka on Kubernetes, right? You'd give like every single pod its own service for a while because you were trying to get like, you're trying to be able to send, um, like send data between replicas as they, as they send things to each other. It was really, it was really an unpleasant experience, but yeah, the put logo cause I'm punting. All right, I like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so I guess it would, I really want to understand what you were trying to do and like, what's the, what's the best way to accomplish it. Linkerd doesn't do anything particularly magic around stable sets, right? It will just honor in Kubernetes routing decisions, right? Uh, and specifically it, it takes over routing decisions when you route to a Kubernetes service. You can see our, our deliveries, our, our rollout's finishing here. So what's interesting is now you'll only see the, the Weaveworks logo, right? So when it, when it wrap, when Flagger wraps up, so the way Flagger goes, right, is it spins up a new deployment that has the new version of your pods, right? And then once it's hit its success criteria, I'm gonna stop this, stop this thing so we don't keep seeing it. Once, it. once it's hit your success criteria, what it does is it takes the old deployment, which still has, you know, however many pods the old version, it deploys new versions of the pod, of the, of the app, and then turns off those old versions, then it shifts traffic back, and then it, deletes the canary version, right? So you always end up, you know, with one, one deployment at any one time. And that's the, that's the basic story. Uh, if you're looking for examples, right? Well, one, the docs are actually really good. Um, the docs are actually really good, so go there. But if you're looking for actionable, actionable examples that involve Linkerd, this repo's got a ton of them. You know, I've got, I've got two different versions. Uh, if we look at the source, I keep two different versions of the of the canary, right? So nginx based canary, so that you can do, you know, the routing decisions there at the nginx instance, or you can go to the SMI side of it, right? Where again, there's no reference to an nginx ingress, and that everything just just goes on the wait, right? Because Linkerd Linkerd itself doesn't do header based routing, doesn't want to do header based routing, right? It sticks with sticks with that. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, that's kind of the that's kind of the big thing. A um, couple of useful things. If you haven't used Linkerd, check out our Getting Started guide. Um, ducks getting started. Uh, if you're interested in Linkerd, we've got an active Slack. Uh, so Slack.Linkerd.io. We'd love to see you there. Um, yeah, I guess that's I guess that's the whole of it. Oh, one last thing. If you're looking for for a job and like the Linkerd project, we're actively hiring folks for Linkerd. So we'd love to love to see you. Awesome. All right. Sorry. Great plug. <laughs> no, no. Not to apologize, but we are at time. So thanks so much. Um, with always your great talks, and I appreciate it very much. Great way to start heading toward the end of GitOps days. So thank you, Jason.